All righty, so. All right, all right, all right, all right. I guess we are alive right now. I guess we're live, okay. So I'm here right now, today. We're here at Prime Camera and we are talking about different topics, including, uh, the most importantly, it's about the TFP groups. And but before we get into that point, I'm here with Mr. Uh, Richard Holman, mm -hmm. who is a photographer here in the Houston city. And we had a chance to work together in a couple of shoots already. You're mainly a fashion photographer, right? Would you say that? Right, right. Fashion, uh, you're a lot into runway photography. Right. Um, and also you're a pastor, which is really odd. And this is like <laughs> something that since the beginning, I'm like, what? Like you're a fashion photographer and a pastor is like, um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, what's, what's, what's the deal with that? Well, I started um, uh, photography mm -hmm. when I was pastoring. While I was pastoring, I realized that the church needed a photographer and videographer, but we didn't have a budget for that. So I said, well, I'll try doing some of this myself. And so I did that, having a lot of knowledge about computers and cameras and stuff like that. So I started, and as you know, as a photographer yourself, after I started shooting for a couple of years uh, for our programs and conferences, I kept looking through the camera and I got hooked. That's so good. That's so good. And <laughs> you know how that happens. But it's it's, just, it's it's like this strange transition because you know like uh, fashion industry is like so uh, so called frivolous and like this this kind of very superficial kind of uh, right. deal. So you will say that it's a very high contrast with the with the um, how do you say it? like the religious uh, side. Right. So do you right. do you find any kind of issue getting from one to the other one or was it just like hey, well, one oh, thing is one thing and the other one well i've been doing it for about uh working with fashion for about probably four to six years now so um it got easier um when i first started out because of the things that happened behind the scenes and so forth i made sure i had an assistant with me mm -hmm. uh someone with me uh, yeah and so um it it kind of started off um Difficult, but I got kind of got into the swing of it. Yeah, uh, meet, meeting a lot of people was good, and of course, a lot of people who were in the fashion industry who professed to be Christians, but I wasn't there to judge. I wasn't there to be a pastor. I was there to be a photographer. Yeah, like I guess you yeah. get like this, like hey, I do my thing one day, one day, and I do the other thing. The other, I guess, I guess that, that works out really well, man. Um, yeah. And your photos are really good. You have a lot of different. Uh, models and a lot of people that actually works with you and i'm, I'm guessing uh, even brands that that sponsored you for different shoots uh, right, their dresses right. and all that talk to me a, li a little bit about the the shoot that we did um two weeks ago what what, yeah, what, yeah. what was that coming from that's a photo and video shoot that i do i started doing about mm -hmm. two years ago mm -hmm. um and i, I kind of started doing it for it started because my photography started out as a hobby mm -hmm. and became um you know, heading toward professional, um, I decided to put on a photo shoot with models. And I started, as I went out into the fashion industry, I started meeting models, producers, and designers. I'm like, this is awesome. What really surprised me is that they were coming together and the designers were not necessarily getting paid. Models were not getting paid. Photographers were not getting paid. And I'm like, well, this is good, but um, maybe not so good. So I said, let me go out here in Houston, all around Houston, see what's going on in this industry, see where I fit in. And so that's how it started. Uh -huh. So you've been doing this, like this kind of groups of, of photo shoots and all that. So, and, and there is like this increasing amount of photographers and models and photographers that are not actual photographers and models are actually not models. That right. That's a very delicate topic, <laughs> yeah. very delicate topic because there's plenty of pretty girls or, or really good looking guys that they're like, yeah, I'm a model. <laughs> and they have no idea what being a model actually um, means. Right. And at the same time, you have plenty of photographers that are only there to meet cute girls or, or right, right, photographers right. are just there to, to you know, uh, 
they say is one thing or they, they, they don't even commit to that. So getting into the TFP community, right? right. I, I know you have your opinions about it. Yeah. I have no idea what they are. I don't know if you're against it or you are actually pro TFP, right. but right. I just recently was, um, became a part of, of one of the Facebook group, one of the many fa Facebook groups that are TFP here in Houston were a bunch of people that, Sometimes are models, sometimes they're not. Sometimes right, they're photographers, right. sometimes they're not. Um, share their time so the photographers can get a little bit of experience and the models as well can get a little bit of exposure. Right. Um, right. So what do you think about these groups? Like, are you are you a favor? Are you against it? What's what's going on? I've actually been in some of those groups, and um, uh, of course, I started out being in favor of it. It's a good connection if you're starting out. Uh, if you're really aspiring to be a model and mm -hmm. really aspiring to be a photographer, mm -hmm. it may, have, may be a good story, but not where you want to end up. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of models, or like you mentioned, uh, pretty girls, handsome men that want to take pictures. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're testing the water, so mm -hmm. to speak. Uh, photographers are supposed to be photographers out there and still shooting an automatic model. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the, wor the worst thing, <laughs> guys. If you're a photographer, if you're a photographer, you're an aspiring photographer. Get rid of that auto <laughs> of button on your camera. Please go into manual and figure things out. Yeah, that's how you actually learn, All right? Yeah. So when I was shooting at the church, I realized, and I, I fell in love with photography. And say, I realized I needed to go to school because uh, I'm actually a musician, and what it took you me. Are. What, yes. what, what do you play? I play saxophone and flute. Oh, yeah, you told me you play sax. Right. That's so cool. Right, right. I've been, ooh, I've been playing flute. is my favorite instrument. Oh, really? I've been playing. I just realized. I mean, is it yeah. like, uh, how do you say it? Like the, what kind of flute is it? Uh, uh, all flutes. Regular flute, C flute, bass flute, alto really? flute. I play them all. Piccolo. Jazz, yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it took, what took me 25 or 30 years to learn on the flute mm -hmm. as a jazz musician mm -hmm. and gospel uh, musician I realized that I could have learned in college in about two or three, two to four years. So when I uh, came up on photography, I said, I need to go to college. Mm -hmm. So I went to HCC Community College, mm -hmm. and I'm about to finish um, a two-year degree there. Mm -hmm. And so I needed to learn the camera because I really wanted to learn photography, and I aspired to be a, a high-fashion photographer. Uh, however, this TFP, this TFP, um, it did work for a while because it gave photographers a chance to uh, learn the camera, mm -hmm. learn how to work with models and interact with people. However, once my portfolio was built, I realized I didn't need to do that anymore. Yeah, And I noticed a lot of things doing that. I found out, like you said, a lot of women and men are just out there. They're just taking pictures. Yeah, And it, is, it became a fun thing for them. So when, you, when I go to their Instagram or their Facebook page, I just see pictures everywhere. A lot of good ones, a lot of not so good ones. A lot of not so good ones. And they may have one or two. Yeah. You it, know. I guess I guess it's it's a good way to start, right? Or, yeah. Or yeah. Did, my only concern when I was thinking, like, okay, what what is it about these groups that might be um, not so great? Because in, in a way, it's amazing. Because, like, mm -hmm. I see photographers, like, even established, actually established photographers. Right. And they're just like, man, I want to take some photos right now. You know, right, you, know right. you get this this creative itch. And you're just yeah, like, man, I, I want to get some photos right now. So you go there and you're just like, yeah. hey, who's up to some photos right now, right? right. Um, but at the same time, um, yes. there are two things that I found that might be not so great about these groups. The first one is you might get used to not work with real people. And whenever you get the, uh, because like as a model, for example, it's not the same way you're working with, with somebody that doesn't know what they're doing and they just allow you to do whatever you want. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you go and work for an actual established photographer mm -hmm. and they start posting you, they start asking you for things that, that you're like, oh, nobody has asked me for this. Right. And, and then you might even feel uncomfortable or you might even feel like, like uh, he was just, he didn't let me be myself right. or things like that. That is like, yeah, girl, like you're a model and you're supposed to listen to the creative, uh, the person behind the glass. So, so you look good or you give uh, whatever his vision is, right? You're, you're an instrument of the photographer. Right. And sometimes you're working with, with somebody that does not know 
photography you you think like oh i am the one creating the posing and doing the and and sometimes it's it it happens as well but 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 yeah and the second thing is perverts there is many 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 guys that might buy a camera and they're just like hey who's up for a shoot uh 10 p.m uh real quick in my house and it's like bro are you are you sure you're looking to photo like are you getting a creative itch are you getting like you know what i mean um and giving of course photographers a bad reputation you know what i mean right, because right. it's very easy to to say like, oh, he was looking at me or he's like girl i was looking at the photo or like, i was looking at light or whatever yeah. um but yeah so so what do you think about that that's been a serious issue in the photography industry yes yeah even out there working with fashion shows one of the producers came to me one day and uh, I noticed in her second show that one of the photographers that she used previously was no longer there. I said, what happened to this guy? Uh, when I mentioned his name, and she said, well, I had to let him go. I said, well, what happened? She said, well, he pulled one of the models to the side and made her feel uncomfortable. And so it's a learning experience for photographers as well as models. Yeah. Models have to understand that they need to take somebody with them to the photo shoot sometime. Yeah. Uh, make sure they're not alone. Make sure they're in a comfortable and safe environment and also for photographers i think because at some point in you know whenever all this me too movement started and all these women started coming out with these horrible stories about like abuse and photographers like uh asking for weird stuff and there was right. even a couple of models on, on um, instagram they started sharing their stories and that's right and there was like thousands and i was like man I got, but as a photographer, I also got worried because I was like, because I, I know personally one story of, of, of this guy. He was taking photos, right? Mm -hmm. And then he asked the lady to, and, and he grabbed a girl that wasn't a model, right? He was wow. just like grabbing a, a TFB kind of thing. So he's he asks, uh, asks the girl, like, all right, just press your breasts with your arms and, right, and right. kind of lean over, right? He was probably looking for the shot or I don't know. But the girl felt very uncomfortable. Right, she right. didn't say anything. Goes out of the session and she tweets, "This guy made me feel uncomfortable. Wow. He asked wow. me for yeah. this kind of pose yeah. and whatever." Well, everybody went after him, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and girls and ladies that didn't even knew if if that was uh, uh, the intention of the guy right. went right. after him, and he stopped being a photographer forever. And now, if if he was doing it without intention, I'm glad that that happened. Right, but if he right. wasn't, if he was only directing her, right, it's right. like, wow. And at some point, I got even scared, To I was like, man, what if I do that? What if what if I make somebody uncomfortable? Right, if I'm asking right. just like, oh, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? And and right. then some, some girl comes and says, like, like, oh, he made me feel uncomfortable. Uh, so one thing, photographers, make sure that you discuss every kind yes. of photo that yes. you're going to be taking beforehand. Right. Like, hey, this is the kind of outfit, this is the kind of outcome that I'm looking for, this is the kind of uh, thing that I'm, I'm ambitioning, are you up to the task? Like, right. you know what right. is, this right. is going to take. Yes. And yeah. as models, if the photographer doesn't do that, make sure that you say, hey bro, what are you expecting of this? Right. Because right. I don't want you in the middle of the shoot just shoot. saying like, yes. hey, yeah. take off your shirt or whatever, yeah. it's <laughs> like, um, so make sure that you, you have this conversation. And I right, feel that TFP right. groups will be a, a very gray oh, no. area that will allow something like that. Right, right. I've even uh, gone as far as to ask models, hey, is it okay if I touch your hair? You know, uh, is it okay, uh, you know. Fix your if hair. I, yeah, yeah or, or pull this, your clothes. Or, and that was one of my reasons for uh, aspiring to be a fashion photographer. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, with uh, Badour or whatever, um, and, or nude photography, uh, I try to stay away from that because of my reputation. Yeah. And so that's why it's good for models. Number one, models, take someone to the photo shoot with you. Yeah. If it's a new photographer that you're working with, uh, photographers, it's good to have someone with you as an assistant. And if you're a male photographer, preferably a male with you. Uh, if you're a male photographer also and you're shooting a female alone and it's only you and two females yeah, yeah. it's good yourself. to bring a female friend with you or sister or female assistant so that the, the models female models will feel comfortable in your environment exactly you yeah. know. And, and 
they're gonna be feel safer and they're, therefore your photos might come out uh, bigger now yeah I was in a couple of TFP groups in Austin okay and I noticed a very big trend of girls just trying to shame photographers wow. I saw one post in particular that kind of got me angry I'm, I'm gonna say this photographer mm -hmm. uh, asked for like hey whoever is free to shoot right and then there's a lot of girls and, and guys saying like me 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 right so he talks to the girls and he's like hey I want to take photos on on um, on lingerie like boudoir photos right? Right, right that's all he says right and and I know this because I saw the conversation he's like hey girl so the kind of photos are like this, right. and and these are on underwear, wearing underwear. This is the kind of actually the brand that I'm going to be using. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the girl screenshots the conversation, goes into these groups, and she's like, "This guy is asking me to get naked, and and I don't like it because wow. he's a pervert." And I saw his Instagram, and he has never taken these kind of photos before, mm -hmm. so don't trust him. And I was like. Girl, like maybe he was just trying to get in that. You know what I mean? Like right, he didn't right. do anything wrong. Right. He right. was just, I and mean, he was actually doing it the right way. Like, hey, this is the kind. Are you comfortable? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she was just like straight, uh, trying to to kill him. I was like, boy, that's tough. I like to insert some here for a minute, Jay. Uh, what I learned in school from my professor Andre Herman, who is a great professor and photography instructor, mm -hmm. is he said never shoot a model or an individual without filling out a model release form to make sure uh, you both understand what each other's expectations are. Yeah. Um, how many images do you want? Uh, what type of shoot is it? Um, different things. Was it turn around for the photos to be ready for her? Uh, yes, yeah. all of that need to be discussed. And so when models or photographers want to shy away from uh, the professional route or the f professional way of handling business, mm -hmm. then that's a sign that something negative or bad could happen, you know, as far as you ruining your reputation. Once your name has a bad name, yeah. and once you develop a bad name, it's you probably It's very can't. hard to actually get out of there again. Yes, yes, yes. Have you ever had an experience similar or n no? Um, because I overall like being a pastor, I think like your reputation is, is on the line way more than anybody else, right? I haven't ex had an experience like that, probably because I try to make sure someone is with me, and because of me being a pastor, I have to work twice as hard as the average photographer yeah. to protect my reputation. Yeah, of course. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. And and I try to shy away from. You know, I have a little discernment. And most people, you can feel the vibes of an evil person pretty much. Definitely. A lot of us, you know, some can get biased, you know. But whether it's a man or a woman, you can tell if they're kind of, you can you can tell a loose woman when you see one or a loose, you know, uh, a man or, or whatever. So we have to use our instincts and we have to use our vibes when working with people and kind of sense if this is a good person to work with or not. And, of course, me being a pastor, I have to do that all the time, and I do that. So what I try to do is build a relationship with the model or person or try to get as much information about them as I can, and even their past, who they associate with. I look at their page, mm -hmm. Instagram. I look at their Facebook page before the shoot, okay? Are you with me? And sometimes I may ask questions about, you know, what they're trying to accomplish as mm -hmm. a model. Mm -hmm. And if, if I get... You know, if the green light don't go on, then I may hesitate to work with that person. Yeah. And so you have to protect, uh, you know, I'm a registered business. Yeah. Uh, all of my equipment is insured, uh, DBA, um, it just everything is in place. So I file taxes, I pay sales taxes. Mm -hmm. Most photographers don't uh, register themselves, you know, for the income that you make. Mm -hmm. And because you have to pay taxes. If I charge someone for a photo shoot, I have to charge them a sales tax. And at the end of the year, I pay sales tax on the m income that I made for that year. So I'm not in this for fun. I'm not in this. And I'm and, and this can open the door for what I'm... Uh, there is a friend of mine, producer Carnell Jones, who is um, launching a campaign to protect models. And so I decided to launch a campaign to protect photographers. It's called No Loot, No Shoot. In other words, TFP has really affected the 
photography industry in a very negative way. Mm -hmm. No money is being exchanged. You would think it was good for the model to have a photographer, you know, shoot pictures, send her some pictures, and she put it on a page, and she may get a few calls. However, you have to understand that this model has to get her makeup done, to have professional images, uh, hairstyles, mm -hmm. uh, out, nice outfit, uh, nails, um, and whatever. And so that's going to cost us some money, travel. And so if she goes all over the city trying to build her portfolio with photographers she don't know, may get some pictures, may not. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Then uh, she's going to spend a lot of money, time, and effort, and there's no guarantee that she's going to really get what she's looking for. Mm -hmm. Sad fact is none of most of them don't have a vision or a goal for their modeling career. Mm. I ask models all the time, well, what type of model do you aspire to be? And most of them can't tell me. Well, I don't know if I want to walk the runway. Well, I'm just trying this out. I, somebody I, told me I look like a model. I could be a model. And the, the, there are way different kinds of models. Like some yes. runway, runway girls, like you try to take photos of them, and they just have no clue how to actually pose for a camera. Yeah. And some other fashion girls that are there just for the for the photos, mm -hmm. and you put them on the runway, like, girl, take off their shoes. Or, 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 or guys as well, right? Like, this is really jacked guys, and they're like, yeah, I can be a model. Bro, <laughs> bro, the fact that you spend on the gym, I mean, you you look amazing, you have very big arms, and you probably can kick my face. Uh, but you're not a model, man. And yeah. and even if they're very handsome, they put it in front of the camera, they're all right. stiff. And, um, but, but yeah, so. Anybody can take a good, a lot of people can take a good picture mm -hmm. with a good camera, but, yeah. you know, it's, it's the modeling industry is a real, it's a big animal. So so what is, what is it, this campaign that you're creating? Like you said, protecting photographers? Uh, yes, TFP, uh, without money being exchanged, um, is affecting the photography industry. Um, when I became a photographer, uh, I I used and I kind of shy away from weddings, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. because uh, even cell phones, cell phones can eight megapixel cell phones taking great pictures. Yeah. People are using cell phones to uh, take pictures to eliminate paying a photographer. Yeah, you know, for their graduation shoot, I've talked to people for graduation. I give them a the best reasonable price I can. They say, okay, well, I'll call you and let you know. Next thing I know, on their Facebook page, they have some nice cell phone images uh, of their graduation. And, yeah. and they're satisfied with that because they may have saved $75, $150, maybe $250 yeah. for, for a full photo shoot. So um, a lot of things in photographers. Uh, and when we were getting ready for this, I studied some, I looked at some other things that's affecting the industry. If money is not being exchanged, uh, with me having the equipment that I use, yeah. uh, you've seen some of my equipment, and uh, yeah, you have and, really good. You know, remember you have the best uh, there is in the market at the moment. I, right, because uh, I didn't want to buy twice. That's yeah. what they said. Don't yeah. you know? So I went ahead and got what I needed so that I could pr produce some professional images. And so I have to get paid. So I came up with no loot, no pay, uh, no loot, no shoot. Mm -hmm. So. And so now I'm having to reestablish my image as a photographer because the same model that may want me to build her portfolio, she'll say to herself, well, I'll just go join a meetup. Out of six or eight photographers, she there has to be one. Somebody, going, somebody in there is going to be real good. And, and there's also other photographers, screwing photographers, because they're like, yeah, I'll do it for free. I'll do it for 100. And, <laughs> and now that you want to charge, you're like, bro. Like you're just killing everybody else just by going your price. So, and that happened with the wedding industry as well. Yeah. That happened to the wedding industry as well because it's like there's thousands of photographers now willing to shoot a wedding for four hundred dollars. Wow. And wow. it's like yeah. ten hours just taking the photos and walking around and running up and down. And now nobody wants to pay you what they're supposed to pay you because oh, I have this guy. He'll do it for four hundred. All right. Good luck. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have fun. Have fun, but yeah, it's 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 hurting the industry a lot. Right. right. But yeah. So, but you think you think um, I mean, but at the same time, I think TFP is a great gateway to mm -hmm. start into photography yeah. because not everybody can afford a model, not everybody can afford an actual photographer, photographer to get a right, a, right, a, a right. book, um, or the the uh, Polaroids or whatever. So, so that's that's a good thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, what else do you have uh, on your notes right there? Well, um, 
not much more. We we discussed quite a bit. Um, uh, my good friend Carnell Jones, great producer in the city of Houston, mm-hmm. uh, he came. I watched his campaign mm-hmm. for No Pay No Runway, where models yeah. go all over the city to be in fashion shows. Uh, they sit at a venue, nice hotel, Hilton Hotel, Galleria, whatever, mm-hmm. and they sit there from maybe 12 noon to 7 p.m. before it's time to walk. Mm-hmm. They wait for other models to get their makeup done. They have to get. They wait to get their hairstyle. Uh, they wait to get their nails done, and they sit there and they give them pizza to eat. Of course, they don't want to. You don't want to eat a full month yeah, meal and yeah. get on the runway. And they, at the end of the night, and I notice them when the show is over, they are rushing to get out the clothes to get home, and they didn't get paid yeah. a dime. They didn't get make any money. And of course, that might work for a, a young lady who is aspiring to be a model. Don't know where she want to go. She got a chance to be seen. But for a, an established model that's been on the runway for two to four years, you know, they're trying to get paid now. And mm-hmm. uh, it's it's a lot going on. It's a lot of controversy behind yeah. the scenes. And that's what I wanted to see firsthand for myself. Those are risking themselves, like by going out there to this uh, people and, and everything. Like you never know. So one great way to protect yourself is – if they are willing to pay me a thousand bucks, they're probably legit. They probably won't try to, to, to yeah. do anything wrong. But if this guy just came up at 11 p.m. saying like, hey, Carol, I want to take some photos. He's like, mm. uh, how much are you going to pay me? Uh, I have uh, 20 bucks. And some, I have some vodka here. Uh, it's like, oh, girl, like, please, please stay away from but those. You know what? Those you know, th- we're laughing about this, but they're – this is what's going on out there. Yeah. And because if a lot of young ladies, they're not all Christians. They they want to have fun. They don't want to just take pictures. No. Uh, they want to do nude. They want to do boudoir. And uh, it's fine. They want to have a drink. Uh, and being a pastor, I'll never forget this, and I have to share this. I, went, I was doing a photo shoot with this great model for my class project to get a grade. Mm-hmm. And and she mentioned, she said, well, uh, and my, my, my uh, studio was near my church or whatever, she mm-hmm. said, uh, well, you have to know that uh, us models, uh, are you going to have some wine there? And, you know, it surprised me for the first time. Yeah. I don't even drink wine or anything myself. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I wasn't careful how to answer her. I said, <laughs> uh, I, was, I wanted to say, what do, what do I need wine for? <laughs> she said, well, that puts the model in the mood for posing and everything. And I fully understand that. Yeah. But I said, well, uh, I prefer you not to bring wine, but if you want to have some, if you want to have some before you come yeah. to the shoot or whatever um, because I wouldn't want my assistance or my, you know, my reputation, you know, yeah, and all the, this yeah. stuff. And then, uh, uh, so, but we got through the shoot. Uh, she did an excellent job. Mm-hmm. I've never seen a wine bottle or a cup of wine. <laughs> In my last production, you know, I have some assistants that work with me. I said, well, if you have to bring something for the models, y'all just keep it, you know, yeah. in a certain place. And, and uh, if that works for them, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Know? So, um, was I want good kombucha. Or was, was it kombucha? I don't know what it was. It was really good. I have no idea. It was. I think it was kombucha that the, they, they brought in for the, that shoot that we did together. Yes, and I tell my sister, I say, well, just don't bring it around me because the bishop, I can't have any. <laughs> man, that's that's yes. great, man. Well, it was a great talk. Um, yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming. Um, hopefully we get to, to have you here later okay. to discuss the business <laughs> business side of photography and also i would love to have a model here okay to have okay. their side of the story yes, like their yes. side of the tfp their side of of this uh creepy situations because as as male we yeah. see things in one way and we have no idea of a lot of the the struggles that females um can go through uh, right, with right. And, and lately i've been opening my eyes to this n- whole world of of yes, yes. Uh, aggression, etc. So I would love to have maybe next next uh, podcast we'll have somebody here to discuss their side of the story. Let me so, share this. Um, mm-hmm. Being a pastor has really been a plus for me because it has made our models feel more comfortable, and we've even talked about it on the on the set as well. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm a perfect person. I'm still human, mm-hmm. and and I have to be concerned. We have to be concerned about that. But it has been pretty much a plus for me. And uh, it, 
it creates, you know, when you try to live right or be the right kind of person, mm-hmm. you attract the right kind of people. That's right. And that's been a good thing for me. And um, I'm Richard Holman with Richard Holman Photography. Uh, I've been doing this professionally about five or six years, and I hope to pursue my degree uh, here pretty soon and enjoy working with you. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. How can they find you on your Instagram? I'm on Instagram. Uh, just type in Richard Holman Photography. I have a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. And let me share my website. My website is www.rhphotostudio.com. It's www.rhphotostudio.com. I have a lot of my work there as well. That's great. That's great. Well, and you guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to be having these kind of discussions going to our Facebook, Prime Camera, Prime Camera USA. Yes. Uh, we are a rental house here in Houston. So if you want to rent lights, uh, lenses, yes. cameras, whatever you need to rent and use for your next production, um, you can do so. Go to primecamera.com. You can see all the equipment that we have in there. Yes. And of course, don't forget to follow me also on my Instagram, X U S A N G E L, Xusangel. That's how you're going to be able to find me, Jay cool. Perez, here with Prime Camera. And as well, if you are looking into having your own podcast, you can do so. We have this podcast set up all right. for rent. So give us a call to Prime Camera. You can find us on Google, Prime Camera USA. And again, thank you so much for everything, Richard, and hope to see you here again soon. All right. Look forward to it. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you, everybody, and see you again next week.